<laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Good morning, everyone. Today is another magical day here in the Central Florida area. Super excited to share with you Kiki's Breakfast Cafe. This is gonna be so, so good. It's a breakfast spot, very, very popular in the area. There are several of them. It's not the only one. It's not, there's not just one. There are several of them. We're here to try some amazing breakfast. The menu at Kiki's looks absolutely amazing. They've got waffles, pancakes, French toast, stuffed French toast, omelets, chicken breast omelets, poached egg meals, egg favorites, side orders, beverages, and then the whole lunch menu as well with panini sandwiches, salads, all sorts of great things, including wraps there. We're here for breakfast. I'm tempted by the omelet, but also tempted by a sweet treat too. I cannot begin to tell you how tempted I am by the waffles, the pancakes, French toast. Super tempted by all of it. But, you know, in being good means picking the protein item. So I'm gonna pick something that I haven't tried before, protein item, the fajita chicken breast omelet. That sounds really, really good. Something I have definitely never tried before, or even anything close to it. And then if, if we're hungry later, maybe we'll split something else, I don't know, but we're gonna start with that fajita chicken breast omelet. Sure enough, our food has a Right, I've got the fajita chicken omelet. It looks absolutely amazing and the smell is truly overwhelming. Cannot wait to try it. David's got that Hawaiian omelet with pineapple inside. I believe the, the pineapple is indeed cooked. I'm gonna try a little bit of that one. David's gonna try a little bit of the fajita chicken. We'll let you know how they are. Let's dig in. First up, the fajita chicken. Bon appetit. I had a few bites of the fajita chicken omelet here at Kiki's. It's okay, not my all-time favorite. Chicken's good. The flavor overall, is, it's good, it's just not amazing. I had the Southwest omelet a couple days ago. It was delicious, absolutely delicious. Th that one I get again, this one, probably not, it's it's all right. Just tried some of the potatoes. I gotta tell you, I love it, absolutely love these. The, the potatoes, that's the one to get right there. Seasoning in there, I can't put my finger quite on it. It's not a paprika, it's not an Old Bay. It's somewhere in between, there is a, a quite a bit of oil in there. You can definitely taste all the oil, but there's a, there's a great flavor to these. Wow. Now for David's Hawaiian omelet, bon appetit. We've got a clear winner, a clear winner. The Hawaiian omelet is delicious. The uh, pineapple is cooked or canned, I can taste that. So no problem there with my pineapple allergy. I love the Hawaiian omelet. That is, that's my favorite that I've had at Kiki so far. The, the waffle, I've had a waffle too, really good. But this omelet, yeah, the Hawaiian omelet. Great taste to it. Mixes that ham and the pineapple together in a way with the cheese. The American cheese goes so much better with that pineapple and ham. I love it. Overall, it was a good breakfast. I would say that I totally agree with you on the Hawaiian omelet. Hawaiian omelet is the winner here. The other omelet was not bad, and I like the buttered toast on the side. However, I was not a fan of the potato. They're calling them french fries, but it's really just diced potato. So overall, I'd say the food was good. I think I liked my Philly cheesesteak omelet last time I was here even more than this one. So it was good food here today, but I think they probably have even better. I can see myself coming back to try more items on the menu. I don't know if I would get either of these options again, but maybe, with the Hawaiian one, maybe. Overall thoughts on Kiki's Breakfast Cafe, I did enjoy it, really, really did. To be honest with you though, I, I much prefer like the waffles. Like they, the, the omelets are good and the Hawaiian one was really good, but the waffle, I had the strawberry and chocolate one the, the very first time I was here and it was delicious. It was so, so good. That's what I'd come back for. Not The protein item's great, you know, protein's very important. I'm trying to stick with the protein, but I don't know. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Those waffles are delicious. After a great breakfast, David and I are gonna make our way to a shopping area by Winter Garden. We wanna do some more exploring out and about, and we've been once or twice, but we wanna see more of what's around, you know, just general area, a little bit of exploration, a little bit different. Today, let's make our way over there. Here we are in the Winter Garden shopping area here. There's the Ross, Old Navy, and Best Buy. We're going to Best Buy for a little bit. Well, look at this new camera I've been hearing about. The new camera is called the Sony ZV-1. I've heard a lot about it. You know, I carry around the uh, big DSLR, which you know I love. I really enjoy using it. But it is big and heavy sometimes. Sometimes I want a smaller camera. So I've been thinking about it quite a bit. I've been doing a lot of research. Just gonna kind of get my hands on it just a little bit more, see if it's something I might want to have. Here's the Sony ZV-1. It's got that flip-out screen that I've been thinking about quite a bit. It just, I mean, look how compact that is. I mean, compared to what I usually carry around, that is super, super compact. The uh, microphone is one thing that I'm, I'm still a little wary of because there's no external jack for a microphone. Maybe there is. Yeah, maybe there is, right there. Well, you can see there's a little fluffy microphone on top. It actually comes with it. I don't know, I've just been hearing a lot of good things about it. Maybe it'll be worth a try. I don't know. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that the a7 III, a7S III, a7R III, it's a better camera in every way, in every way. But we're comparing something like this in my hand, just, just for comparison, versus something like this. 
And there's something to be said for the versatility, the, ab the ability to kind of go anywhere, anytime. And you know, it's, it's just kind of in your pocket, not no backpack, you just kind of got the little camera with you. I don't know, something about that to me is just, it's just so appealing. Still debating that camera. May end up getting it at some point, but not today. Now we're gonna move on to Marshalls. Here in this area, we've got a Home Goods and Marshalls connected. We've never seen this before. Went over to look for, uh, not sure what we're looking for. We're browsing. We just made it to another part of this outdoor mall area here at uh, Winter Garden Village, I believe, and there's a lot of people here. Now, when we parked here, we noticed the sushi spot across the way. It definitely has our attention, but we ate recently, so we'll see about that. We're actually gonna head into this Nike store over here. We're just gonna do some shopping. Shoes, shoes, shoes. David just pointed these out to me. Imagine this design just like on a regular shoe. It looks like Spaceship Earth to me, but it's cleats, so wouldn't wouldn't work so well. But you get the idea. I like that. I know how we can get 1.21 gigawatts. It's from this Glock Tower. Oh, right here now, this is a clock tower winter garden. You can actually see we're here in the uh, central area. Hey Dave, and you can see across the way this uh, AJI, I'm not sure if it's just Aji or AJI Sushi, they have to actually have hibachi open. Again, not that hungry yet, but good to know. Maybe we'll have to try it another day. Took a lot of time here to sit back, relax in this nice chair in the shade. There's a fan up above from the restaurant that we're kind of getting the, uh, the pieces up. So we're not in the restaurant, but we're getting the fan of it here in this bench, which is nice. But Dave and I are now gonna go for Starbucks, a very kind friend gave me a recipe, a very good custom recipe that you can order from Starbucks to have a pumpkin spice latte or pumpkin something taste like a pumpkin pie. As soon as I heard about this, I was thinking to myself, I need to try it. Pumpkin pie? It's better than any secret menu item I've ever heard of before. So that's what we're gonna try right now. This is a secret menu item to make a iced chai latte taste like a pumpkin pie. Here we go. The idea for the pumpkin pie drink is thanks to Bella. Bella recommended a venti iced chai latte with seven pumps of pumpkin. She says it tastes exactly like a pumpkin pie. Dave and I are gonna split it up. Bella, thanks for the recommendation. And the Starbucks is thanks to Melissa. Melissa, thank you so much for your gift card. Can't wait to give it a try. Here it is by our barista friend, Bella. The venti iced chai latte with seven pumps of pumpkin between these two grande cups. We're gonna try it together, let you know how it is. David, cheers. Cheers. Here we go. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I think that is my new favorite drink at Starbucks. That just blew it all out of the water. Wow, Bella, great suggestion. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I think that is exactly like a, a, like a spice pumpkin pie. It is unbelievable. I'm trying to think of which pumpkin pie it is. Like I've had so many, I've had pumpkin pie. I love pumpkin pie. This is, this is it. This is it. Get this. Don't. Don't miss it. Don't miss that drink. Oh, okay. F new favorite drink at Starbucks that fast. It took one sip. One I might need another one. It really is a fantastic flavor. The pumpkin pie flavoring in there is strong. I think the pumpkin spice or the chai spice makes a lot of sense. So you kind of get that spice kick. Just a fantastic combo. I can definitely see why it's your new favorite. It's up there for me. I don't know about number one, but definitely up there. I'm trying to compare this to like a regular pumpkin spice latte. This beats it by leaps and bounds, in my opinion, which it's hard to say. I know it's hard to say it. You say it like, Michael, that doesn't make any sense. It's that good. It's that good. Uh, and then frappuccinos, I'd also get this over many frappuccinos. That to me, that's how good this is. So yes, yes to this drink. Two hours later. That was a bit of thunder right there. And I'm going on record as saying I'm not bringing an umbrella with me because it doesn't look like rain or any rain in the forecast. Probably a bad idea, but that's all right. No backpack, no umbrella, just you and me and Magic Kingdom parking lot. After a great earlier part of the day, we are back at the TTC, but not to go into the Magic Kingdom. My plan, my plan from you know earlier this afternoon, I was thinking to myself, you know what, today I could totally go for a bison burger. I really want a bison burger. And you say to yourself, okay, Michael, that sounds good. Bison burger, Wilderness Lodge. Why, why are we at the TTC? Well, you may recall, Disney's got a hard closure of all of their resort parking areas. So you have to be either staying on property or staying at that resort in order to park there. So there's, there's no way for me to park at Wilderness Lodge to get my bison burger. But how do I get one? The method that I'm using today is to park at the TTC, take the monorail or a ferry boat to the Magic Kingdom, not walk into the Magic Kingdom, take a boat, to Wilderness Lodge. I know we're going out of our way, but it's it's a bison burger. It's worth it. It's worth it for the bison burger. As an alternative, we could have gone to one of the other parks and actually taken a bus from that park to Wilderness Lodge to uh, get our bison burger that way. It's just different ways of getting there. Now you know when I say I'd go out of my way for something, this is what I'm referring to. Having to park at the TTC, take the monorail to Magic Kingdom, then get on a boat to get to one of your favorite resorts for one of your all-time favorite burgers. Now, one thing I'm gonna have to be extra vigilant of is the time. Time is now 5.30. 
So I should have plenty of time to make it to Wilderness Lodge, get a bison burger, relax for a while, come back before the last monorail, back to TTC. It's gonna be one of those close calls, I'm sure. One thing that's a bit new here are these pathways to get to your destination. I said Wilderness Lodge, the cast member, they send me down this one aisle way. So you wanna to get to a, you know, Polynesian or other resorts, you have to uh, follow the other pathways. I think that might be the Wilderness Lodge boat pulling away right now. I'm just I'm trying to think about the timing. All right, let's pretend it takes 30 minutes. It shouldn't. From here to there, six o'clock, no problem. Will dislodge, guys, your point, relax, eat, just enjoy. Make sure I get back on the boat before, what do you think, 6.45, you leave extra time. 7.15, get back here, no problem, hypothetically. The calm seas has arrived to pick us up. I don't think I've actually ridden in this style vessel at Disney in years. I can already taste the burger with those waffle fries. Oh my gosh, I've been looking forward to this one. Uh, excuse me, weather forecasters, I was told no rain. What? What's going on with this? One day I will learn my lesson and I will always bring an umbrella no matter whether or not I'm wearing a backpack or not. One day I will learn. Today is clearly not that day. We made it to Wilderness Lodge and the rain is coming down, so we're, we're still in the clear at the moment. Time is now 5.56. We've got time. No problem, guys, your point. I don't imagine there'll be a wait. If there is, I may end up taking it to go just so that there's no rush situation, but it's worth it. It's worth coming this far out of your way for to get this burger. Hour and 10 minute wait, definitely not gonna be waiting in that one. We don't have enough time to make it back to the DTC to get the car. So there's no way we can do that. So two bison burgers to go. I got David one, kind of a little surprise. So he's not here with me, but I said, ah, oh, you know what, if I'm here, I'm taking it to go, might as well order that second one for him. He loves it too. We're, we're, we love this burger. This is the best burger on property by far. We're gonna wait for it about 10 or 15 minutes here and then we'll probably keep making our way. I heard there's a room there's a new Dole Whip at Pineapple Lanai at Polynesian. So maybe that's what that, this will turn into. Again, we'll see what timing looks like. It's still raining. Anyway, I wish it wasn't, but you know, they didn't bring an umbrella. That's what I get. But <laughs> we'll make it. The managers, the surfers, the cooks, they're so kind, thoughtful. They got extra sauce in there for us because they know how much we love it. We're, we're here pretty frequently. So they say, oh, Michael's back. We gotta get that uh, that grill run. It's so funny. It's so funny. It's <laughs> Thank you so much to the team here. We got two burgers, and the the box on top is actually just all extra sauces because they give us they give us extra sauce. It's that good. It's so good. It was so funny as I was talking to the manager about you know how much I love the bison burgers. We're also talking about the uh, breakfasts and how delicious it used to be. He agreed in full. He's like, don't. Don't stop talking about it. We gotta keep on talking about it because we all want to see it back. Come on, Disney. Viali and breakfast here at Geyser Point. Let's bring it back. It's definitely a little bit more to carry around with you, but well worth it. All right, so I'm gonna head back now towards the Magic Kingdom, get a boat to there, and then determine what I'm gonna do. It depends on how late we get there and how long we have to wait for the boat. We'll make my decision about that dole whip. Just as I'm walking up, there it is. Oh, that's so convenient. That was really quick. So I think we're gonna have time for the Polynesian. 625 right now. We're gonna be in great shape. I'm not sure if I heard this correctly or not, but I think they may actually be shutting the boat down after they drop us off because of lightning in the area. So we may have just really lucked out in terms of uh, water travel. <laughs> Monorail for sure. Polynesian. And then a Polynesian, if we are there past uh, 8 o'clock, no problem because you can just walk back to the car, no issue at all. The wind's getting more intense and you can see more lightning and hear more thunder. Hopefully we'll make it to the monorail before it starts pouring. I gotta look at the, I guess forecasting doesn't even matter, right? We shouldn't even bother looking at forecast. Makes it so much easier without the backpack so I don't have to worry about taking it all security so much quicker. Rain is just starting, like barely, barely drizzling. We're gonna make it. We're going to make this. Side note, express monorail, super long line. So resort monorail makes sense anyway, whether or not we uh, stop at the Polynesian. Makes sense. Given the extreme rain and storms outside, I think I'm actually gonna go to the Polynesian. I know what you're thinking, Michael, that's counterintuitive. I've seen enough storms at Disney at this point. This is gonna pass in maybe an hour. So if I leave now, I'll get soaked for sure. If I leave later, I only have a 50-50 chance. So I'm gonna take my chances. All I gotta do is not bring my umbrella or any rain gear whatsoever for you. It's gonna pour like this. That's that's, that's all I gotta do for it. It doesn't always rain this heavily, but when it does, I don't have an umbrella with me. Word to the wise, several weather apps to check every single time, and even then, you have to be prepared. That's, that's the key, that's the strategy behind it, so let's go ahead 
and grabbed a very special dole whip from the Polynesian. It's called the Firecracker Float. It has the uh, soft serve with, oh, it's got coconut rum. Maybe they can make it without the rum. Thanks to my very good cast member from behind the store here, you can actually see we got the Firecracker Float, but without alcohol. So it's 6.33, I believe, without the alcohol. Should have everything in there. Uh, except for the coconut rum and the popping candy on top, so excited. From Pineapple Lanai, we've got the very special firecracker float, which I was told may only be a limited time thing for Labor Day weekend. Great to know. You can actually see kind of blue below popping uh, rocks on top. This is the non-alcoholic version, about $6.13 with the coconut rum. I cannot wait to try this with you. Could it beat the official Dole Whip, Pineapple Dole Whip here? at Pineapple and I, only one way to find out. Dole Whip tastes amazing, you know what it does with those popping rocks on top? I feel like it adds, it definitely adds in my opinion. The trick is that all the seating around here has been filled up because it's raining, <laughs> it's raining outside. So we got a small spot, I just wanna make sure we could start digging in before it all melts apart. It's green below, could that be like lemonade? I'm not sure, we're gonna try it. It's pineapple juice, pineapple juice through and through, so it is just kind of like a special kind of coloring to it, which I love, and the popping rocks. That's the only difference here. Overall, I love it. You know I love it, pineapple Dole Whip float. I'm all about it, popping rocks. Let's keep that going as an option, maybe just as an option with the Dole Whip. Yum. Overall thoughts on the firecracker float. It was good, it was, but it tasted just like a very standard uh, pineapple Dole Whip float with pineapple juice. I would probably get the uh, the vanilla, the vanilla ice cream with the pineapple juice myself. That's, that's my go-to, my favorite, but I'd love Pop, Pop Rocks with it. Pop Rocks were really, really good. Rain's still coming down quite a bit. Not sure if you can tell from the ceiling. Kind of a cool angle to see it. So we're gonna kind of hang it out in here, relax for a while, and uh, make our way to the car, whatever, you know. No rush. A few moments later. Well, the rain hasn't stopped. Time is now 7.40. Uh, I don't, you know, staying is great. Love staying. I want to get to editing too. That's, I like organize my day. It's tough to organize it all. It really is. So I try and like organize it and, you know, get those uh, videos out every single day. Um, but now the forecast says it won't end until 9.15. It said 7.45 earlier, so I'm not sure what happened to that forecast. It just keeps being pushed back. This, this, is, this is the ultimate lesson here because I, I walked out of the car and I said, oh, it, I can see it. I'm looking at the forecast. No rain. It looks good. How many times have we fallen into this? How many times have we done this? We've done this so many times. It's, it's not even funny. All right, we're going we're gonna to wait for some kind of lull here and then make our way. So inside the Polynesian now and found a few friends who are actually headed back in that direction. So sure enough, a couple very, very kind friends have offered to give us a ride back to the TTC so we do not get soaked in the rain. Oh, it's very, very appreciative. Super, super kind friends. I am so, so grateful we, we missed the rain. They dropped me off right at the car. So grateful. This is, I'm, I'm really, uh, yay. <laughs> Didn't get soaked. Yay. And with that, our night has come to an end. Thanks so much for being a part of the magic with me today. It was so much fun sharing it all with you. Until next time, have a magical day.